Good morning students. So students today we will start with a new lesson in geography. The name of the lesson is how season occur part 2. Now we had already learnt the part 1 in the first term that was our first chapter. So now we will learn about how seasons occur part 2. In part 1 you must have noticed the longest day the shortest day and the days with the same duration of day and night time with the help of the observations in the month of June, September and December. Generally, these dates are the same every year. With the help of the shadow experiment, you must have noted the change in the position of sunrise. Now let us study the changes in the position of sunrise and the difference in duration of day and the night time. So first we learn about the apparent movement of the sun. You must have realized through your observation that the position of the sun at sunrise appear to change on the horizon every, every day. So, when the sun rises, it changes, it appears to change on the horizon every day. Its position appears to move towards the north or south in the course of a year. However, in reality, the sun does not move anywhere. That is why this movement of the sun towards the north or south in a year is called the apparent movement of the sun. Now, the position of the rising sun keeps on moving towards the south in the period from 21st June to 22nd December. This period is called the Dakshinayan and from you can see over there from 22nd December to 21st June, the sun keeps on moving towards the north. This period is called the Uttarayan. The revolution of the earth around the sun and the tilted axis of the earth. Now we know that the earth is, its axis is tilted, means slanting. Are the two factors responsible for the apparent movement of the sun? Seasons occur only with reference to the northern and the southern hemispheres. Now next we learn about the perihelion and the aphelion positions of the earth. Now the path of the revolution of the earth around the sun is elliptical now you can see in the slide the way uh, the earth starts moving in elliptical okay in oval shape okay the sun is at one of the two centers of the ellipse so the sun is in the center the sun does not change its position as the earth moves in an ellipse means in an oval shape it distance from the sun does not remain the same means as it keeps moving its distance towards the sun does not remain the same it is at its minimum distance in the first week of january this is called the perihelion position of the earth as you can see on the slide it's written okay that is called the perihelion position of the earth now in this position the southern end of the axis is towards the sun. As against this is the first week of July, the earth is at the farthest point from the sun. Now when you see that the earth is far from the sun, that is called the aphelion position. You can see the distance is 152 million kilometers and when its distance is little bit closer 147 million kilometers then it is the perihelion position now in this position 
the northern end of the axis is towards the sun. Now with the help of this figure 8.1 which shows the position of the earth in relation to the sun you can guess which season prevails in which hemisphere. So we had seen in the previous slide the cycle of seasons. So with that you understand which season will come next. Seasons occur due to the revolution of the earth as well as due to the tilt of its axis of rotation. So how does season occur? It occurs due to the revolution of the earth as well as of the because of the tilt axis of the earth. Next, as the earth revolves around the sun, the equator uh, receives perpendicular rays on two days in a year. This condition occurs on 21st March and 23rd September. So on these days, both the poles, you can see the North Pole and the South Pole are at the same distance from the sun. This is called equinox. When both the poles are at same di distance, then it's called equinox. The illuminated and dark portions of all the parallels, including the equator, are shown in figure 8.3. Now in the figure, the circle of illumination divides all the parallels from the North Pole to the South Pole equally. We can see over here. Everywhere on Earth, nighttime and daytime are of equal duration. This condition is called equinox. On equinox, the sun rays are perpendicular on the equator. As we can see, the sun rays are perpendicular. In this condition, the circle of illumination coincides with the great circle defined by two opposite meridians. Then, in the northern hemisphere, spring prevails. That means when is spring? From 21st March, you can see over there in the slide, to 21st June. While autumn prevails from 23rd September to 22nd December. The southern hemisphere has the opposite seasons during these periods. In the northern hemisphere, 21st March is called spring or vernal equinox, whereas 23rd September is called autumnal equinox. The equinox or solstice date can vary by a day or so. Next we will move on. When any of the poles inclines the most towards the sun that is 23 degree 30 minutes parallel of that hemisphere receives perpendicular rays. See look at figure 8.4. The sun rays are perpendicular at the equator on 22nd March and 23rd September which are the days of equinox. So after 22nd March you can see over the 21st. So after 22nd March other parallels between the equator and Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere start receiving perpendicular rays sequentially. That is only on 21st June, you can see over there it's written on top, and 22nd December, the sun rays become perpendicular on the Tropic of Cancer. You can see it's written over there, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn respectively. These days are called solist days. Okay. Next on we'll move to sun rays are never perpendicular on any of the parallels between Tropic of Cancer and the North Pole or between Tropic of Capricorn and the South Pole. 
21st june is the longest day and it marks the shortest night in the northern hemisphere similarly as you can see on top it's written 22nd december marks the longest day and the shortest night in the southern hemisphere so 22nd december is the shortest day in the northern hemisphere now you can see over there in the region from the arctic circle to the north pole the sun remains visible for 24 hours or longer at the north pole the sun is visible in the sky from 22nd march to 23rd september that is for 6 months similar situation prevails in the region between the antarctica circle and the south pole in the period from 23rd september to 21st march now seasons have been decided on the basis of the duration of sunlight equinox and solstice the equatorial region does not experience any change of season hence the climate in that region does not change at all in places beyond the equatorial region now due to the local conditions seasons other than summer and winter are seen to occur in different parts for example rain occurs in india in a specific period that means from june to september at that time we get rains therefore we consider four seasons such as summer the rainy season the period of retreating monsoon and winter there are four seasons in europe and north america too they are summer autumn winter and spring next we'll move on to the cycle of seasons and the living world now if the earth axis was not tilted that means if it was not slanting or not moved the same climatic conditions would have prevailed throughout the year the seasons would have not occur one and the same type of climatic conditions would have prevailed on each of the parallels it is because of the tilt of the axis that leads to occurrence of seasons change and diversity of the earth the living world on the earth is affected by the cycle of seasons now see in different regions we get different types of plants or animals are found like for example in the antarctica region at the southernmost part of the earth birds like penguins fish like seal and animals like walruses are found whereas in the polar region of the northern hemisphere animals like reindeer polar bears arctic foxes etc are found people living in this regions too have adapted to the natural conditions that means people are used to that climate prevailing in that region our adaptation to climatic condition is possible only up to a certain limit that is why organisms prefer a certain habitat during extreme cold climatic conditions when the food supply becomes scarce that means less a number of birds and animals migrate that means they move temporarily to other places trees bear fruit in a particular season we all know that therefore agricultural seasons also depend on the local climatic conditions next we move on to the last point that is do you know now once the winter at the north pole becomes severe that means when the winter becomes very when it starts becoming very cold the bird travels southwards when it is in some when it is summer in the northern hemisphere it flies back towards the north pole it has to travel in search of food in the course of one year that is this arctic turn this first bird okay it travels because of the climate because of the okay so in the course of one year it travels around 70000 km 
it might be the only species in the world that experiences summer twice in a year so birds also migrate they move on to different places in search of food next we'll move on to the next bird that is the siberian crane now due to severe winter and lack of food cranes from the cold northern regions visit india traveling around 8 to 10000 kilometers once summer starts in india they migrate back to the north so this way we see animals adapt themselves to the situation and sometimes they even have to migrate so migration is in animals or birds also the way we migrate we move to different places birds and animals also migrate according to the seasons okay so here we end with this chapter we will learn the next chapter in the next video thank you for listening children goodbye take care